Hey everyone, I'm John Tisson and today we're taking a look at the Sony DSC WX500. The WX500 is Sony's successor to the WX350 and it replaces it with quite a few new features. For a couple of examples, you've now got a Carl Zeiss 30x optical zoom and a flip-up LCD screen for different angled shooting and for selfies if you're into that sort of thing. Now to be honest, this is very similar to the higher-end model, the HX90, only omitting a few features from this model. So stay tuned as I take you through a tour of the camera, as well as its features, image and video quality, and of course, what I personally think of it. The WX500 has a solid plastic build with a very simple design layout. On the front you have the lens itself with the AF illuminator to help the camera focus in low light situations. On the side you have a micro USB charging port and on the other side you have your NFC badge for one touch pairing and the Wi-Fi logo. On the top you have a mode dial, shutter button which is also shared with your rocker switch to zoom in and out, power button and a switch to pop up the flash. On the back of the camera you have a very simple button layout and a flip up LCD screen. And finally on the bottom you have a tripod mount, mini HDMI port and a little door which houses an X-Type battery plus an SD card slot. Now the camera weighs approximately 236 grams, so it's not going to be a burden for anyone who is traveling around. But what I don't like about the design though is that there is virtually no grip. So I do recommend people using the supplied wrist strap just for that extra security. While using it, I did find that the LCD screen was a bit difficult to see in bright sunlight, despite it being a high resolution LCD screen. So I do recommend people to turn up the brightness to alleviate the issue. Diving into the menu will show that there are a lot of features that this camera has. And it can be a bit daunting and confusing to navigate through. So I always recommend people familiarize themselves with the camera and if they ever need to know what a particular function serves, to press the question mark button and it will bring up a brief description. You can also customize it for functions that you change often. Powering up the camera takes about a second and a half from the time you push the power button to take a photo and it takes about a second to power it down. Autofocusing was quick and tends to slow down and hunt a bit when you zoomed all the way in. Regarding battery life you can expect to get roughly 400 shots on a full charge. Having a 30x optical zoom in this sort of camera is very useful for people who want an all-in-one camera that isn't too large. Also the stabilization works pretty well as I was able to get clear shots using one hand when zoomed all the way in. Wi-Fi is a common feature these days where I can control the camera through my smartphone or tablet or I can simply send photos to my phone simply by tapping it using the NFC badge. Although this feature is only available for fully featured NFC phones. Otherwise you can still send it through Wi-Fi via Sony's Play Memories mobile app. You can also expand the features of the camera by downloading more apps. And of course you have the classic Sony features such as sweet panorama, picture effects and 10 frames per second shooting. The picture quality is very similar if not the same to the higher end model the HX90. Both featuring an 18.2 megapixel sensor and the same 24 to 720 millimeter lens it can capture a lot of detail and in good lighting conditions can look very sharp. There is a bit of distortion on the wide end of the lens and when it comes to low light conditions, images can become a bit grainy for a compact camera. But it's definitely better than most smartphones and in its price range is definitely one of the best. Okay so this is just a quick video of myself using the Sony WX500. I have the flip up LCD screen on, uh, flipped all the way up so it's going to be easy for me to compose my shots and I have the wind noise reduction on so hopefully that will reduce the noise that is around the area at the moment because it's very windy and I do have the intelligent active stabilization turned on so this is going to help compensate for any shake that you're going to see in this video 
because I'm just using it handheld just walking around the park at the moment but I'm also going to show you in the next clip the uh, the amount of zoom that you can get especially when you're filming or when you're just taking a photo so enjoy that okay so this is just a quick video showing the zoom capabilities of the camera so at the moment I'm using optical zoom this is all the way to 30 times right now wait right now and if I go closer this is 60 times now The camera can also shoot in three file formats with different frame rates from MP4, AVC HD, and XAVCS. And if you're shooting in XAVCS, you will need to use an SDXC class 10 card or else it won't work. Like what I said earlier, the WX500 is more of a stripped down HX90. And in saying that, it's a camera that is capable of holding its own ground, especially when you factor in the price. The camera is chocked full of features and is capable of getting more features via Sony's Play Memories camera apps. And with its 30 times optical zoom, you can grab a whole range of subjects from light, uh, wide landscapes to capturing things that are far away such as uh, sports or wildlife. Now if there's one thing I would recommend with this camera, it's to use the wrist strap, which will make the camera holding more secure and mainly because there is no grip on the camera itself. Now I would also recommend this for people who are traveling, who need a, uh, a small and compact camera, vloggers, or the casual snapper. And if you don't need the extra features of the HX90, like the viewfinder or the extra controls, this is definitely the camera I would consider. Now if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And if you already own one, let me know what you think of it. And remember to like this channel like this video and subscribe to my channel for more Sony camera reviews and tutorials. Don't forget you can also check out more sample photos on my Facebook page and check out my Instagram for more photo updates. Now until then, happy shooting and thanks for watching.